Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Julie and in today's video, we'll be discussing everything about kitchen, storage, and organization. I don't know about you, but I feel so much better about myself and my life when my home is kept. A place for everything and everything in its place. If I wasn't an interior designer, I would probably be a professional home organizer. I mean, I really love to arrange and then rearrange my cabinets and drawers. So my workflow in the kitchen is more efficient is more functional with the ultimate goal of the kitchen supporting my family's daily needs. Before we get started, I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring a portion of this video. If you don't know what Skillshare is, then you're absolutely missing out. Skillshare is an awesome online learning community that features thousands of creative classes available at your fingertips. You can download the classes to watch on the go or stream it wherever you are. Class topics focus on creative arts. Everything from illustration, design, photography, video, social media, and so much more. Perfect for creators of all levels from beginners, amateurs, pros to masters. You really will find something for everyone with the thousands of inspiring classes available. This week, I watched Art Journaling for Self-Care, Three Exercises for Reflection and Growth by Amanda Rach Lee. Amanda has a wildly popular YouTube channel that features her original art, but more importantly, she focuses on doodling and journaling as a means to express your mood, your thoughts, and what you ultimately want in life to create the future you desire. I have been journaling for many, many years, and in the last few years, have found myself more focused on work-life balance when I have the resources and the skills to journal with intent. Amanda teaches her methods to art journaling in a fun, dynamic, and creative way that feels productive and highly intuitive. The first 1,000 people who click on the link in my description box will receive one free month trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. You will gain access to the thousands of videos featured on Skillshare, so once you have membership, you don't have to pay again to view each individual class. Most classes are under 60 minutes, so it's easy to fit into your busy schedule, especially with no ads and no interruptions. Consider it one hour at a time that you can invest in yourself and hone your skills. Back to the video. I'm so excited to share my top tips on kitchen storage and organization. I mean, I really just love to organize the home. I love the entire process of home organization, and if you've ever seen any of my videos, it always starts with the first step which is to purge. Get rid of everything that's expired, that no longer serves a function in your kitchen, and make way for a systematic approach to storage and organization. Step two is to take inventory. This means opening up all of your cabinets and drawers and laying everything out on the counters. You will organize your kitchen gear and gadgets into groups. Pots, pans, silverware, dishes, Tupperware, seasonings, sauces, you get the idea. Once you take inventory of everything you own, it's easier to organize them in a way where like items stay together. Step three is to create smaller zones. Let's break up the kitchen into different zones and share ways on how to keep these items organized. Starting with the refrigerator organization. I don't think anyone's refrigerator really looks like this on the daily unless they're preparing for a stylized shoot. Life happens, you throw the chaos of family into the mix, not to mention takeout, Costco bulk items, and all hell breaks loose. But there are methods to corral the clutter, and these are my favorite pieces to organize the refrigerator. Clear bins so you see everything. I like glass containers, but you can easily use plastic Tupperware to keep your items organized. You want your fridge to look like this? Remove all items from the packaging they came in and transfer them to these storage containers immediately before consuming. If you have a separate refrigerator drawer for beverages, keep ingredients like lemons, limes, and oranges together to make the perfect cocktail in a splash.
You'll be able to shop all of the looks that I share in this video in the description box below. I feel like the pantry needs its own video since there are so many little details that make up a perfectly organized pantry. Here are some of my favorites. Wicker baskets on the lower shelves with tagged labels for chips, snack packs, candy, oatmeal, pretty much anything that already has its own packaging. Tall Tupperware canisters on the middle shelves with smudge-free waterproof labels for rice, flour, sugar, pasta, and cereal. Use tiered stands for canned goods and spices so you can see everything at a glance and make use of all of that vertical shelf height. Wire baskets are great for taller bottles and cans and heavier items that need a little bit more stability. Use acrylic Lazy Susan turnable organizers for smaller condiments. You can keep them together organized by similar meal. For instance, if you make pho noodles regularly, keep your hoisin, sriracha, and pepper on the same caddy so you can bring it out on the table and back in the pantry after dinner. If you don't have a walk-in pantry, convert a pull-out drawer for your makeshift snack area. Use acrylic boxes to organize the different snacks and keep juice boxes in the same drawer for a one-stop snack shop for your kids. If you have a pantry closet, don't neglect the back of the door. Use it to store shallow goods like spices and seasonings. Moving on to the coffee station. This is a spot that I literally dream of having in my next kitchen. A place for smaller appliances like a coffee maker, a bread cabinet, even a toaster or toaster oven, an espresso machine, a microwave, or turn this area into a snack station for the kids. If you've ever wanted open shelving, but afraid of committing to this look in the open kitchen area, the coffee station is a perfect place to do it where you can display your pretty mugs and teapots, large servers for entertaining, and design a mix of open and closed storage so you can show off the pretty pieces and leave the smaller items hidden in drawers. Install a row of shallow drawers for tea bags, creamers, sugar, and you can purchase drawer dividers for optimum personalization. I DIY'd this loose leaf tea storage using a commercial magnetic knife display and installed it on the underside of my open shelf. You can purchase little magnets that affix on the top of the metal mason jar and it will hold on to the magnet rack with little effort. This isn't the most earthquake safe, so make sure you use heavy duty magnets for a stronger hold. Under sink organization is all about the challenge of working with plumbing to utilize all of the other free real estate. Pull out organizers are ideal here and luckily you can purchase any of these additions to affix under your sink.
I love this easy DIY method to storing dishwashing gloves and cleaning supplies. The tension rod doesn't require any drilling and it still frees up space below. There are so many ways to store pots and pans in the kitchen, but my favorite method is to design a pull-out drawer nearby your stove, either on the same elevation or right behind the stove for easy access. Store heavier pots on the bottommost shelf, reserve the middle shelf for lids, and the upper drawer for cooking utensils like spatulas, tongs, and ladles. Here are some cool clever ways to trick out your existing cabinets for pots and pan storage. Moving on to Tupperware organization. I use my Lazy Susan corner cabinet to store Tupperware since it's so light, but it can also get really cluttered really fast. So here are some alternative methods using drawers to organize your Tupperware. When it comes to dinnerware storage, like plates, bowls, and glasswares, I mean, I've seen homeowners kind of split across the board. I have open shelving, so I love that my plates and bowls are in plain sight and right within my reach on a low upper shelf. If you prefer your plates organized in drawers down below, use pegs to keep them confined and in place without shifting as you open and close the drawers. If you prefer dinnerware in an upper cabinet, you can store plates on their sides standing up and group them according to size. You can also use acrylic stands to section them off into stackable tiers for ease of retrieval. I love these metal bowl stands to place in upper cabinets. You have to measure your bowls first to make sure you specify the right stands for the perfect fit. Utensils organization is all about inserts. 
I like to keep my utensils, knives, and scissors laying flat in a shallow drawer. Use grip mats to line the bottom of the drawers so smaller inserts don't move around. How do you like to store your utensils? Laying flat in a drawer or upright in deep canisters? We all have those miscellaneous pieces, those extra pieces in our kitchen that need a home of their own. Let's talk about the trash bin. I love double bins for recycling and trash. Use a pull out trash bin with a section for trash bags and a small dustpan so there's no reason to open multiple drawers for the same function. Cutting boards, baking trays, muffin pans can all stay upright in a deep lower cabinet or pull out shelf and sectioned off with metal racks or tension rods. The tension rod is such an easy DIY project that you can do right now without the need to modify your existing cabinets or drawers. One of the best locations for these taller items is next to the stove, where you can take advantage of the full height without sacrificing cabinet width. Did you know that you're supposed to keep liquid seasonings away from the stove? The constant heat spoils the liquid faster and affects their taste down the line. You can modify a bottom drawer to route these grooves and install metal dividers, or you can use the same tension rod technique from the cutting board storage to DIY dividers yourself. Remember to measure the width of the drawer so you know what size to specify. You can also use this method for storing liquor bottles if you want them hidden away from the kids in a locked drawer. Oils are supposed to be stored inside a dark cupboard. Remember these tips. Always avoid direct light, windows, and heat. So no leaving oils on the countertop or next to the stove. You also want to prevent the oil from being exposed to air. I love this medicine cabinet for oils. Such a luxurious installation. Bonus points for this method since interior walls are inherently the coolest spot to store these items. You can keep dry spices and seasonings next to the stove, but the liquid seasonings need to be kept some distance away. Here are some additional luxuries for your dream kitchen. I'd like to share a floor plan of how I like to organize the drawers and cabinets for my clients when designing their kitchen. Of course, your kitchen is not going to look the same. You might have less drawers, you might have more drawers, you might have more cabinets, less cabinets. Essentially, I want you to pay attention to the proximity of the types of drawers in relation to the appliances nearby. Here are 
are some key takeaway tips from this kitchen storage and organization video. Keep like items together. Keep trash bags right next to the trash bin. Keep baking ingredients with measuring cups and large bowl mixers right underneath in the same column cabinet. The goal is to minimize the steps needed to prepare a meal from start to finish. Of course, you can still run around, open all the drawers and cabinets, looking for the 20 different things you need to make dinner, but how efficient is that? If you like this video and you want me to turn storage and organization into an entire series room by room, please give this video a thumbs up. I want to end this video with a little challenge. I want you to look around your kitchen and tell me the top two things that you could reorganize right now to make life a little bit easier for you and your family. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring a portion of this video and make sure you're subscribed to my channel if you haven't already. Click that little notification bell to be notified of new videos that we drop every Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.